Where do we see Timur? We do not know. Small corner out of Indonesia. If you do not know where Chad is, Chad is one of the poorest countries in Africa. How will you feel the pain of the people there? If you want to become a philanthropist, if you want to create a legacy, you need to know your place in the world. Ikra and Aksa are just learning that. So they're learning about this man called Rasul Madidi. Rasul Madidi is a PNR, Procter, PNG, Procter and Gamble representative in Egypt. And he was doing a very good job. Rasul Madidi is a US uh, citizen. Some of our brothers who keep flying to the US and they don't meet us. They have complained against them. Right? Subhanallah. But one fine morning, Rasul Madidi got up to the Azan in Fajr time, not knowing the day was 25th January, couple of years behind. Subhanallah, Egyptian world will change. As Ikra and Aksa, our little girls, are learning about this man, Rasul Madidi suddenly hears that there is some protest happening at the Tahrir Square. Few people, a mob coming in, they're assembling at the Tahrir Square, and slowly he did not realize it was the beginning of a revolution that will shake the African and the Middle Eastern and rather the entire globe. What happened was few more people came together, suddenly the Tagbis became louder, suddenly people, more people came in, the violence started happening, and slowly it started getting into some clashes that Rasul Madidi did not know. Rasul, our friend here, is living in Egypt for the last six years. He has a six-year-old boy and his wife. They're living together as a PNG representative in Misr. Imagine what is Rasul thinking as 25th, 26th January, 27th, and now it's 29th January, five days into the protest, and this is what Rasul is looking at. We took a small clipping to share with you what can be built up in Egypt, and maybe we'll take the story from there. I'm gonna fight for my dignity and I'm gonna fight for my country and I'm just gonna go out on the street and, and, and get this done myself. We are not the people that used to be. We are a new people now. There's something in the soul that cries out for freedom. shaking the ground from their voices of, of fighting for their freedom. This is the first revolution in the world that was on Facebook as an event. People were clicking, I am attending the revolution. Their anger did not really matter, as long as they will be under control. This is how they treat people. Mubarak uh, had a, uh, a sense that uh, suppression works. martyrs who died and thousands that were injured um, these are all people who put themselves on the front of the line for others to live Tayyip, my story is not about Egypt my story about this man in Egypt Rasul Madidi and as the violence increases he is learning that he has to get out of Egypt as soon as possible a revolution takes place when people belong to an idea Today we are probably looking at that revolution through pens and books and technology. But what is special about this revolution, they call it, is the first Twitter revolution. The world has changed. If you and I are still with our Soam textbooks and we are not using technology or Wi-Fi and we think Angry Bird is the wrong way of teaching our children, we are living in some other age. When I say the word tablet, what comes to your mind, sir? What's the first word that comes to your mind? I say tablet. And if you're looking at, yes, Jeffrey, but you're still young, mashallah. If you're looking at the medicines, Jazakallah, welcome to the baby boomers, you're still in 1970. But if you're looking at iPads and the tablet, the red one there, it's really beautiful. Subhanallah, welcome to 2013. Rasul Madidi realizes he has to come out and this is not happening. 
He goes to the airport and this is a chaotic scene in the Egyptian airport in Cairo. And there are thousands of people all waiting to take the first flight out of Egypt. But something special happens. His company says, I don't care what's the money with you. Please book as many flights as you can because the flights are getting cancelled out of Cairo. So Rasul goes and books Etihad. He books Emirates. He books Singapore Air. He books Egyptian Air. Any flight he could get, he keeps booking it. Five o'clock, he's standing there. The water supply is decreasing. There's panic around and the airlines are cancelled. He's standing in the queue. The queue is moving ahead. They say, sorry, Singapore Airline cancelled. And everybody's rushing to get the ticket. Rasul is changing line to the next Egyptian Air. Sorry, six o'clock, Egyptian Airline cancelled. Everybody's moving to move ticket. Rasul comes there and he stands another line. Next is Etihad Air. Everybody cancels, Rasul goes, and people say, what's happening with you? How are you doing it differently? He says, I don't know, my company told me to buy five tickets, and they are the ones who are paying for it. Do you give that kind of freedom to your teachers, brothers and sisters? Oh, educators, it's not about Rasul Madidi. I just told you a story. It's about you. Are you giving that kind of liberty to your teachers? They can move line in times of crisis and take decisions right there and then. If yes, welcome to the new revolution in education. So finally, the last flight out of Egypt is the Emirates airline to Dubai and Rasul takes it with his six-year-old son and he flies to Dubai. That is the time Rasul clicked this picture of the Cairo International Airport from five, he was waiting and changing queues and he is now safe and sound with his family. Imagine Rasul never leaving PNG Imagine for his Rasul life. never leaving PNG for his life because PNG helped him when they needed him. This is what learning is all about. Learning to know is learning to know your place in the world. Are you creating that place for children, for Ikras and Aksas, for Rasul Madidis, for our teachers in our school? That's my first lesson to you today. Learning to know takes us from just being there existing to start living. From just surviving to now doing something. From feeling secure and from security comes the kind of talent that we are looking for in our own schools, in our industries, in our education sectors, in our organizations and across the world. Ikra and Aksa learned this first part very well. They went to the second part and said, all right, I know now. I know my place in the world. I know where I belong. I know my social studies. Now what do I do? So now the second lesson our little young girls understood was learning has to do something. It's a kinesthetic word. It wants you to some action that we're talking about. So where does Ikra and Aksa learn? I've got two flags with me. From the globe, I just took two of them. The flag on my, probably on my left hand side as I talk to you, is the flag of which country? Which one here? A little geography lesson for all of you. Scotland, change the color a little, maybe a little more. The flavor of the season is in your cards. Barakallah fi. Sultan's always, why Finland? So Sultan, you'll have a chance, inshallah. Finland, Barakallah fi, Sultan. Thank you so much. Finland is the flavor of the season. Everybody speaks Finland. Everybody wants to be Finland. Everybody wants to get Finnish educators. We'll have a panel, we'll talk about it. But there are lessons to learn from there as well. But what about the flag on this part of the screen? Maybe an obscure country, yes? Baraka, who said Uzbekistan? I got a gift for you, inshallah. Someone will be coming around. Uzbekistan, a flag probably most of us do not know. Both of them represent two different cultures. One, an old Balkan state, a CIS country, former Russian country. One is on the European, one of the early Scandinavian countries on top. There is something to learn from both the places. Uzbekistan, the one person which was not there were people above 90 years who were too old to understand anything. Or children below 10 years or rather even below who were just too young to write anything. That was the state of this country called Uzbekistan. Then government policies came in and as you know how government happens, they understood that we should not spend so much on education, we should do a little more on defense. So the literacy rate started dropping down and today it stands as 12.6% Uzbekistan. The center of learning, Uzbekistan, with cities like Tashkent. And if you know what is there in Tashkent, what is there in Tashkent? The Topaki Museum there, the oldest Musaf, the Uthmani Musaf, is right there in the museum in Uzbekistan. Our little girls, Ikra and Aksa, are learning, we need an Uzbekistan in our school. We need to learn about our culture, the history, the tariq has to come from Sira. Social studies can be biography of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Instead of quoting Winston Churchill alone, we can also call Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. The balance has to be there. 
But then they also learn that that's not just enough, subhanallah. We're not creating a frog in a well. We want our children to be learning something else beyond the realms. We are here because that's what deen is. The deen is about the globe. When Rasulullah was tabuk, he says, I can see the treasures of Kisra and Rome. That's where his vision was. Don't make your vision very small, my friends. So subhanallah, our little friends learn about a story happening in 1867. There was a mining engineer by the name of Frederick Instam. He started something called paper mill. Paper was a means of communication. So he wanted to communicate. He said, let me do something in paper mill. And because Finland is right in the Scandinavian countries, wood is easy. So he started making wood into pulp, into paper. So he was in a business of communication. As the years progressed, in 1800, they went further. In 1890, he said, let me make something called paper is with electricity. Electricity is the national uh, insulator of, of, the, of the wood. So he started making cables. Cable became a means of communication. He was still in communication. His core competency did not change. And then he said, I will make rubber, another natural insulator. So he started making rubber. Which company are we talking about? Finland gave two biggest things to the world. Number one, Finland gave Angry Birds. It's on your mobiles. And your mobile phone. Which company is this? Yes, welcome to the old age, the Nokia. He was still in communication business. He started with paper, he went to electric cable, he then went to rubber, and he then went into a company called Nokia that you and I grew up with. The phones that we were with, subhanallah, Nokia said we are still connecting people. You know, your school can diversify. Your school can branch into something. You can be into teacher's training. You can be into, a, into a media production. You can be into journalism. But your core co competency is education. Do not lose that core competency. Subhanallah, Nokia sold it one billion phone. That's the amount of people that are in the world. One billion phone in Nigeria in 2008. And then finally, the Android operating phones, then iPhones took over. But knowing the nature of Nokia, they're not going to bulk down. They're going to come back probably with a better technology and a better mobile phone. Tomorrow, you have not seen. But technology is going to take us to that tomorrow. If you don't involve schools into technology, we'll miss out the big boat. So we are going to talk about our little girl, Ikra and Aksa, into two simple things. You need a Tashkent and a Helsinki in their lives, the capitals of respective countries. You need a Finland and you need a Uzbekistan. This is the balance. We are Ummate Wast, isn't it? And subhanAllah, amazing thing about the ayah of the Quran, when Allah says that you are the middlemost community, the ayah of the Quran is the middlemost ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. There are 286 verses in Surah Al-Baqarah and the ayah which says you are the middlemost community is 143. Simple mathematics divided into half is 143rd ayah of the Noble Quran. How amazing is that? This is the precise placement our Creator wants us to have, the balance that we are talking about.